Well, a week ago, stocks were flirting with record highs, but now the market seems to be cooling down a bit. So is this the start of more deeper declines? I'm joined now on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange by Keith Bliss from Catone & Company. Keith, good to see you. Thanks, Scott. Good to, be, good to be with you. So let's take a look at where we stand. We're down about 41 points in the Dow. It was down about 100 points earlier this morning. Is this the tip of the iceberg in your view? No, not really. I mean, listen, a lot more is going to happen on the negative side before I think we would get a 5 or 10% correction. It's interesting where we're positioned right now in the market. August has always been a slow month mm. historically, but it's been slower than normal. It's been the difference between the average daily volumes between January and August takes a steep decline, but this is the lowest it's been in about 30 years. So I'm not sure we can make a lot out of these low volume days. All of the major indexes have basically flatlined over the last week. Yes, they go up a few points down a few points, but there's not a lot to read inside of this, and I don't think we have a steep decline on the, on the in the offing. Well, because the past eight days, we saw two sessions where all three major indexes closed at a record high. I mean, well, what does that tell you? Well, it tells me that people want to buy, you know, U.S. equities, and it seems to be the only game in town when yeah. you look around the globe. It's clear that all investors are now trying to chase yield. You've got a demographic problem across the globe to think about where the pension funds around the world are absolutely have to get somewhere in the neighborhood of 6 to 8% return on their money every year if they're going to if they're going to manage their future obligations so they've been forced to come into US equities when you have bond yields around the globe that are at pegged at zero or even negative they're going to come into the equities market where you've got a lot of dividend payers you've got some high yielding things think of a market Scott where 40 percent of the S&P 500 gives you a higher yield than the 30-year US bond 60 percent of the S&P 500 gives you a higher percent yield than the 10-year note. Mm. That's going to chase a lot of people into the equity market, and that's why we've seen these lofty valuations. And we haven't even talked about European or Japanese sovereign debt. I mean, right. you know, don't even start there. Well, it's negative. Mm -hmm. uh, and therefore, any pension funds that are, that are domiciled in those home countries have been forced to look elsewhere. They just cannot manage their obligations with that kind of return. All right. Now, some are saying that the declines today were triggered by a dovish Federal Reserve in their minutes on Wednesday, and then you know, more Fed speakers after sort of hinting at a, at a rate hike sooner rather than later. Is the Fed trying to cool down this market? I think they're trying to temper expectations for sure and not let it run away. You heard John Williams from the San Francisco Fed. He was, he was pretty adamant in his comments that not raising interest rates or holding off on them and not taking the punch bowl away, his words, uh, anytime soon would actually be unhealthy for the economy. I tend to agree with him on that. We need to get back to a normalization. They probably missed their chance two years ago in truth, but they, they want to do that. I also think that they've kind of painted themselves into a corner a little mm. bit in that we're very long in the economic cycle, albeit it's been an, an anemic economic cycle, but I think they want to have some dry powder at hand if they do need to loosen monetary policy going forward as opposed to going back to the QE. They can do it through the normal interest rate mechanism. So yes, I think a lot of the sell-off is, is people are getting nervous. It's not unusual when you're hitting all-time highs right. for people to go ahead and say, let me hedge out my position or just release the positions and go back and reevaluate. Valuations are very stretched by historical standards, not where they were. Um, in 1999 and 2000 or some of those real bubble years, but they are getting stretched. So, sir, people are reevaluating where they are right now. Let's also shift and talk about oil. It had a pretty good week this week, up about $4. It's now at around $48 a barrel. You know, I looked at the correlation between oil and the S&P 500, and obviously for the first half of the year, it was in lockstep. But that correlation started to break down around July 7th, and only in the past you know, week or so has it come back. How does oil fit into all of this? Well, certainly oil is a key component when we evaluate the global economy, higher oil prices. Uh, the narrative is generally means that there's a lot of global demand going on in the world. It's a simple supply and demand type of calculation that you're going on there. I think that the two became disconnected in that tight correlation left for a while. Again, as I was saying earlier, as people started to seek out yield, it didn't matter what oil prices were doing. A lot of people have come to the conclusion that oil OPEC is going to move the oil price where they need to move it to either drive out competition or s help sustain their member their membership. And the two really don't mean much other than the fact that the energy stocks are still roughly 10 to 15 percent of the S&P 500. So they will move in lockstep with the oil prices for sure and keep going. And that will impact overall equities. But yeah, I think you know most investors are looking at, at certainly the main sectors inside of equities, whether it's telecom, whether it's technology, 
whether it's healthcare, consumer staples, consumer discretionary, and knowing that the oil prices don't really have all that much to play into those sectors. So that's why you're going to see the, the break of that correlation. Yeah, and in the S&P 500, we've got telecoms, energy, and materials leading the declines today. Going forward, of course, it's the end of the summer. Volume is light, but we've got two factors that investors will be watching. Janet Yellen's speech in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and then, of course, that August jobs report. Two factors right before that September meeting. What is your strategy for the next few weeks? Well, for right now, the, the strategy is to be in stocks. Again, I don't see anything on the near-term horizon that's going to knock us back. And right now, we look at the markets as neutral, neither okay. overbought, no oversold. You could certainly see the S&P 500 on our work trade all the way up to 2260, 2270, somewhere in that level. And of course, the other indexes will go along with it. The Russell 2000 is an index that everybody should keep an eye on because while the NASDAQ, the S&P, and the Dow have been hitting all-time highs, the Russell has not. It's been a laggard and it's not even close to getting back to its all-time high. If it starts to move up, it will pull the other three with it. So Janet Yellen's speech is important. We'll see if she um, is counter to John Williams a little bit. Sure. She is an avowed dove. She doesn't mind saying it and if she thinks that we need to have continue to have loose monetary policy and lower interest rates, she'll state it. And then the jobs that report, you're right, is important. It seems that the Fed is now focusing more on the tighter labor market than they are in inflation. We still can't get above that 2% inflation, but the labor market is starting to get tight, which if you know anything about economic models, you know the labor market gets tight before inflation creeps in. So I'm sure they're trying to get ahead of that trade a little bit. So those, you're absolutely right. Those are two important data points that we'll be watching next week. And we'll be watching them, of course. Let's take one more look at stocks. Dow is down 38 points. Uh, so, you know, we'll, we'll see how we finish the end of the day. Keith, thank you so much. My pleasure.